You're listening to the Australian Water Association podcast series. My name is Jo Taranto and joining me is James Good, Asset Management Program Coordinator at the Water Services Association of Australia, and Stephen Nash, Manager of Operations at Goulburn Valley Water. And we're discussing the management of asbestos cement pipes now and into the future. Thanks for joining me, guys. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, thanks, Joe. James, how big an issue are the legacy risks that remain from asbestos cement pipes? Well, it's quite a big issue for the, for the water industry, Joe. There's 40,000 kilometres, we estimate about 40,000 kilometres of asbestos cement water pipes uh, in Australia. And this pipe's ageing. Uh, we expect in the next 40 years um, that we need to replace the whole lot. And this could cost the industry up around $10.4 billion. But also, as the pipe ages, it requires more maintenance. And every time we need to do maintenance on these pipes, it exposes the community and our staff to the potential risk from asbestos uh, fibres from the asbestos cement pipe. And so what work has the Water Services Association been doing in this space? Well, the Water Services Association, um, of recently anyway, has been working with the Asbestos Safety and Eradication Agency. So the Asbestos Safety and Eradication Agency has an aim to eliminate all asbestos-related diseases in Australia. And they're working with the Water Services Association on asbestos cement water pipes and how they can be best managed to fulfil their aim of preventing any kind of asbestos related disease. So they've been working with us to develop some best practice guidelines um, to give the industry confidence that what they're doing is right and to give regulators confidence that what the industry is doing right with regards to managing the risk of asbestos cement pipes. And what sort of risks do asbestos cement pipes play for people working in the industry and also um, consumers? The first thing to say about asbestos cement pipes is there's, there's no risk from drinking water that runs through them. It's all about the risk of airborne fibres that you might get from an asbestos cement pipe. So this might happen if they're dug up, if they're chipped. Asbestos cement pipes in themselves, the fibres are held together by the cement in the pipe. So generally there's, there's, they're called non-friable. So the asbestos fibres won't go into the air by themselves. But if someone wants to come along and dig with an excavator or get out there with a saw or some sort of equipment, there is the risk that asbestos fibres could be released into the atmosphere. And that would be a risk for people working near asbestos cement pipes or to the community at large. Stephen, can you tell me about the work that was going on before ASIA's involvement? Uh, yeah, I can, Joe. Back in um, 2012, uh, was a um, brought up a project for stage one of the um, asbestos cement pipes, which really looked at quantifying the amount of asbestos cement that was being used in the water industry. It's, you know, it has been utilised for water mains, pressure sewer rising mains and gravity sewer mains predominantly. Um, and then looking at what were the issues and performance of that pipe and sort of estimating the, the replacement costs and, and what should be the next stages going forward. A couple of years later, a second stage was done, which really looked at the risk management and internationally at um, what was occurring overseas and and what was the uh, you know what were the best ways to manage this pipe into the future. So I understand, uh, James, that there was a development of a water plan working group. Can you tell us a bit about what that's involved? One of the key areas was working out how existing legislation did not quite effectively deal with the water pipe situation and and where the gaps in the legislation are. The legislation is designed primarily for asbestos used in buildings, not for the situation where their, their pipes are buried underground and are much different, they're a much different risk. So to help address that question, look at what research had been done with regards to the risk of asbestos cement pipes and look at various 
further case studies across the nation, um, ASIA commissioned the Water Pipes Working Group. Um, another important element of that is to engage the various state regulators, both from a safety perspective and an environmental uh, protection perspective, because ASIA is a uh, federal organisation. They have no real legislative powers. So we need to get the state uh, regulators involved and get their agreement and commitment to whatever we put out. So that's that's why the working group was put together, um, to create a really good forum to discuss the issue and come up with a solution for the issue. So Stephen, for an organisation such as Golden Valley Water, what kind of considerations does this have for you? Well, the asbestos cement water pipes um, that are in our network have the higher failure rates due to their age and their predominantly that the asbestos cement pipe um, laid back in the 1950s and 60s and 70s, which was the sort of peak period that these pipes were, were used in uh, water mains predominantly and, and sewer rising mains. They're all approaching the end of their, uh, of their life um, and uh, their asset life. So these pipes are often breaking. Um, in, in, for Goulburn Valley water, we get what we have um, recently, some great rain. Uh, the soil wets up and you get soil movement, um, particularly near driveways, and you can then get a crack and we're out repairing these pipes on a probably a weekly basis. And we need to do that exactly as James said, we need to do that in a safe manner for our staff and to also ensure that we manage it safely for the community um, around that area. The second part is into the future, we, we have to replace these pipes. And because um, once the, the pipes, uh, fail a certain number of times, the impact on the customers is too great and we have to look at replacing them. And, uh, and that's, we have an annual program to replace those pipes and we need to do that in a way that also is um, efficient and, uh, and safe for the community. And Stephen, how important has it been to have access to case studies uh, with water pipe management? It really gave us a chance to sort of... Um, uh, educate um, ASIA and their members, you know, into the, the issues that um, the water industry confronts, as do the legislators, um, the regulators, sorry. Um, so that's been a, a good part of, of that as well. The getting out and talking to the predominantly New South Wales uh, councils and, uh, and water agencies about the background of their case studies and also about asbestos cement pipe management uh, it's been good from both perspectives. I've gained a, uh, an understanding of the issues they are confronting and, uh, and I've been able to explain um, where uh, the water pipes working group's up to and uh, the aim of the guidelines and et cetera. And um, it's probably worked really well at the moment where we're getting feedback from these, uh, from predominantly New South Wales. Uh, and it's allowing, I think, the guidelines to be a little bit broader and pick up sewer pipes as well, which I think will be of a benefit to the water industry on a broader scale. And are those best practice guidelines available now for people to access? They're getting close. Um, I think on the 22nd of May, they'll be updated uh, following the feedback that's coming back from predominantly the New South Wales Water Directorate and, um, and, and other uh, sort of interested groups. I think uh, the regulators um, have been fantastic in, um, in approaching um, you know, other agencies and representatives that may want to provide input. I believe after that, um, it is going to go out to broader consultation at that stage. Stephen, does all asbestos cement piping have to be removed and replaced? The, the guidelines provide um, options for, for the water industry and, and that does include um, where it could be left in the ground uh, and in a retired, uh, as a retired pipe. It's quite clear, though, that the regulators and uh, legislation with both WorkSafe and the EPA, broken pipe does need to be removed. And, um, and that, that is certainly the case when repairing pipe in the field as well, that any broken asbestos cement pipe that, that, is, um, that has occurred through the event or in, re or in repairing the pipe has to be removed. And I think that's, that is very uh, strong in the guidelines as they currently sit. But... There's also how is the, the water agency that, it, that owns that pipe will retain ownership of it and is responsible for it. Therefore, it has to, have, uh, it has to require, meet the requirements of the legislation in respect of having a register for that asbestos cement 
uh, in the form of a pipe. And that can, we believe that we have to then set up the guidelines. And it might be the, the WASA got, um, you know, the, another set of gui- uh, more detailed guidelines, which will provide the rules for the water agency in respect to what information is required to be included uh, on their asset register and also on the GIS. There are tools such as Dial Before You Dig, which will ensure that we can provide information to third parties onto the presence of asbestos cement pipe in the field. And James, what do you see as the biggest challenges to getting asbestos cement pipes replaced in the next 40 years? The biggest challenge is what to do with the abandoned asbestos pipe um, once we once we replace it. So whether we can leave it in the ground intact, whether we need to pull it out and take it to some prescribed waste unit, or perhaps more beneficially, whether we can reuse this best off cement pipe. And WAS has been working on investigating various technologies where you can internally line this best off cement pipe and give an extra 25 to 50, 50 years life. So that's another option that we need to work on. But certainly the, the biggest challenge going forward is, is what to do with the abandoned asbestos pipe when we replace um, cost effectively because disposing of asbestos cement a pipe is very expensive um, but to live in the ground is also a risk for the community and needs to be managed. So that's, that's really what the focus of the guidelines is on is addressing that issue um, in the most, most practical uh, and effective way. What would you say to utilities or asset owners who have questions or concerns about what they're going to need to do in the next few years? Stephen or James, what would you say to them? Um, it's a good question. I, I think um, there's an opportunity now to be involved. So I think you can still influence uh, the guidelines. I believe we, was it probably needs to consider having, um, you know, a, another more detailed set of um, sort of guidelines or best management uh, rules so that they could but sort of flesh out a little bit more detail on on how these water agencies and councils can can manage these pipes and, and etc. And probably um, maybe provide them a bit more guidance on the asset management of, of these pipes going into the future and and planning for their replacement. Make sure that they have got adequate budget and um, and they can sort of program to to replace these pipes in a in a way that their community wants done. I've been speaking with James Good, Asset Management Program Coordinator at the Water Services Association of Australia, and Stephen Nash, Manager of Operations at Goulburn Valley Water. Thanks so much for both of your time. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much for the opportunity, Joe.